Good day viewers, you are welcome. How to solve this nice trigonometric equations? Yeah, so let me just call it trigonometric equation or let me just say algebraic equations generally. So we want to find x here, but all this one they are in form of sine, cos, and tan. We have sine multiplied by cos equals tan, so which is tangent sine theta sine x multiplied by cos x equals to tan x so to do that we are going to consider a solution from here so from here the first thing we are going to do is suppose we consider tan we have tan x so it has an identity and uh, which is equals sine x divided by cos x so we have to note this identity down then let's try and replace it from the given question. So this implies if you have sine x multiplied by cos x, so this equals sine x divided by cos x. Then we have to cross multiply. By cross multiplying, we have sine x multiplied by cos x multiplied by cos x equals sine x then let's multiply sine cos x together we have this as sine x multiplied by where cos x multiplied by cos x so this becomes cos square x so equals sine sine x then if you cancel sine x and sine x that is a very wrong step so we have to transfer sine x to this side we have this as sine x multiplied by cos square x minus sine x equals zero then let's factor out sine x. So there is sine x here, there is sine x here. By factoring out sine x, we have sine x into bracket of. By dividing both sides by sine x here, we are left with cos square x minus. Also divide this one by x, sine x, that is 1. And everything equals 0. So at this point, we have to follow the rule of algebra that so we have something of this form there are two cases so we are going to let sine x equals zero and we also let cos square x minus one equals zero because sine x here is not equal to zero so we have to let this one also equals to zero and let this one also equals to zero then by trying to treat the first one, which is sine x equals to zero, we have to look for all the number that make this one equals to zero because x can take different number. So for instance now, if you have to consider this one, so zero is part of this number. So if you press sine zero, sine zero equals to zero. If you press sine 180, sine 180 equals to zero. If you press sine 360, equals to zero. So that's how it continues every number that is equal to zero are the values of x so therefore we can just conclude here that since we note all the numbers that our x here they can take the values ranging from 0 180 360 and it continues like that so we can try and give it in a general form that our x here is equals to so since this is 180 and uh, we have the value of pi so pi is um 180 so we just say n pi so let's say n pi n is any number so n is a member of integer so positive integer okay so plus zero so that's the value of n so a is the general term and here is the general solution for x. So if we test for when n equals to 0, we get 0. If n equals to 1, we get 180. n equals to 2, we get 
uh, 360. If n equals to 3, so we have to multiply this together and we get 720. So that's how it continues like that. And uh, for the cos square x, so when we take cos square x, we have cos square x. So we transform one to other side and we have 1. Then by taking the square root of both sides, so here becomes cos x equals plus or minus 1. There are two cases here as well also. We are going to let cos x, suppose I let cos x equals 1. So by letting cos x equals to 1, then when we take the cos inverse of both sides, it means every number that equals to 1 satisfies this. And the number starts from uh, 90, 270, and all the numbers like that. So the value of x here equals 90, uh, 270, and it continues. So we can make it in a general term to know the value of y and uh, uh, in a general form. So the value of x here equals 2n so plus 1 divided by 2. So everything multiplied by pi. So this is the value that satisfy this one. Yeah, so when you apply this thing, it's a general term. So when n equals to 1, when n equals to 2, when n equals to 3, so when n equals to 4, and others like that. So n here is also a member of positive integer. So this is how we can solve this problem. And we can still conclude that one for uh, for cos of x, which is equals to uh, negative. So suppose we have cos x here equals to minus 1. So we can define the value of x here and uh, we generalize it in every number we press equals to negative one will be equals to the value of cos so we can drop that one in the comment box so thanks for watching and this is how we can solve this problem if you have another way of doing this we can just try and share it and drop the answer in the comment box see you in the next class never stop learning those who stop learning stop living Bye-bye.